Hi, I'm Mukund Patasarathy, and I lead R&D for Dow's packaging and specialty plastics business. On behalf of Dow, I'm proud to bring you this SAIS Pro Seminar Series. It has been great partnering with SAIS to provide employees in Dow and other companies with wonderful opportunities to connect with professionals that are passionate about developing Asian heritage talent. Before we get started, I would like to share with you a quick video highlighting some of the accomplishments from our employee resource group called the Asian Diversity Network. I thank you for attending and I sincerely hope that you enjoy the series. Welcome everybody to the SACE webinar series. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are now already above up to 250 and still growing. Uh, I'm gonna take a few minutes to introduce you to SACE Pro if you haven't been to one of these things before. Uh, if you have, then hopefully you've memorized my speech for me already. But until then, uh, what we do, SACE Pro, we are committed to unlocking the leadership potential of Asian professionals. The problem, as we see it, is that near that 50 uh, Asians are 50% less likely to be promoted to middle management than our Caucasian counterparts. This creates an Asian leadership gap, which is uh, which impacts obviously us individually, but it also is a is a lost opportunity for the organizations that we work for. Uh, and so when we've done our research, uh, when we've interviewed well over 100 actually uh, Asian executives by, by this point, it commonly distills down to these four major reasons, a lack of political and organizational savvy, cultural deference to authority, ineffective communication and in, uh, influencing skills, and an aversion to risk taking. Now, to be able to tackle these, we've got a few challenges. One is just sheer awareness due to the um uh due to the, if someone can go off of, uh, on mute please let me see yeah thank you um due to the uh, uh model minority myth and also our tendency to not even advocate for our community um we often don't even know about this asian leadership gap to begin with the second is the training most training that's out there does not take the cultural context into into the equation which makes it harder for the material to land and so it has to be taught with the cultural context and that can be challenging especially for organizations to put together on their own then lastly let's just face it as far as uh, Asian development goes within organizations, we often are not the top priority. Uh, and with that in mind, what we've developed is a solution pulling together companies across the, across the nation uh, through their ERGs. And now we have, you know, well over 250 Asian ERG le leaders from well over 100 Asian ERGs 
uh, creating a multitude of programs. And this webinar se series is one of them. It's a free series uh, featuring conversations with training partners. Uh, it's roughly every four weeks. The recordings will be on our website for at least two months. And uh, you can stay informed either by following the website uh, or by LinkedIn. So the logistics of this session, pretty straightforward. Be a brief presentation from our trading partner on a handful uh, of, of bullet points. Uh, then we'll do a moderated Q&A between me and the training partner, but also pulling in questions from the chat. Uh, this is more of a video podcast, if you will. Uh, so please do enter your questions into the chat. It's not going to be an in-depth immer uh, immersive training session. It really is intended to more, you know, penetrate a little bit more and drive a conversation on a handful of topics. So with that in mind, you know, I want to bring up our uh, uh, our guest today is Lorraine Lee. She is a keynote speaker and instructor at Stanford Continuing Studies and LinkedIn Learning. She has more than 300,000 LinkedIn followers. That's about 300 times as many as I have, I think. <laughs> Anne has 10 plus years experience leading editorial teams at top, uh, at top tech firms. Uh, Lorraine is recognized as a LinkedIn top voice and has appeared in publications including Inc., Read Write, and Entrepreneur. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it over to, uh, to Lorraine. I think you are on mute now. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, amazing. I was saying, I'm so excited. I saw that we hit the 300 mark while you were talking. So uh, <laughs> hopefully that's just gonna keep going up. So hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm super excited to be chatting with you all. So I want you to think about the answer to this question. What is the first thing that you do when you get on a video call? If I had to hazard a guess, most of us look at ourselves. We want to make sure our hair is okay, there's nothing weird going on in the background. Essentially, we want to make a really great impression. And now that many of us are remote or virtual first or hybrid, often the only way our colleagues or clients see us is on video. So that makes video really, really important. Uh, but unfortunately, many people still don't know how to use it to their advantage. But that's not going to be you today. So today we're going to learn the essentials for how to present yourself in the best light, both figuratively and literally, to make sure that you get noticed by your colleagues, your clients, and your peers by making that really strong impression on camera. Because I promise you, if you can do it well, it will be one of your biggest competitive advantages and really make people take notice of you. So I think we can all agree that we have so many distractions and things that we have to do in a day, right? It's becoming a lot harder to stand out and capture attention. And that is why I created something called the T method, which is a critical method to understand so that you can make sure that you are breaking through that noise and making a great impression on camera. So we talked about what's the first thing you do on camera, right? What's the first thing you do when you wake up each morning? For many of us, it's going to be grabbing a cup of coffee, or let's just say in this case, it's going to be tea. So the tea method covers the first things that you should tackle before jumping onto a video call. So this is going to ensure that you appear both confident and competent, and it's really going to elevate how the person on the other side of the camera perceives you. So if you want to look like someone who's professional, well put together, confident, tea method is going to get you there. So what is this tea method exactly? T stands for tech energy and aesthetics. So let's start with T, tech. Tech is probably one of the more overwhelming aspects of our new virtual worlds. Uh, we have a lot of new things to think about compared to before in our offices where we could just go into a room and you know click the, click the um, call microphone button in the middle. And now though, there's a lot of moving pieces, right? So I wanna make the tech part a little bit less overwhelming. So I'm gonna share what I view as the basics that you need to have an awesome video call. And these are personally what I've used. They've worked well for me. And perhaps most importantly, they're not super expensive. So that's, that is an important consideration. So hopefully these can work for you too. So in terms of the hardware you need, we're gonna talk about making sure you have an external microphone, proper camera, and then a clicker is always a good idea, especially if you're giving presentations op often. And then you're going to want to make sure you have the right software. So today we're going to talk about our microphone, our external camera, and our software. So let's start off talking about our microphones. I'm going to play a short audio clip for you first, and I want you to think about how you're feeling as you listen to it. Right. 
Can you hear that? I'm not actually hearing. Sounds. No, we're not actually able to hear okay. it. Okay. I'm not sure why it's not playing. Basically, <laughs> the sound is bad audio. So maybe I just saved you all from listening to that. So bad audio. So when we listen to bad audio on calls, it is very annoying, right? Because if someone has bad video, you can still manage through it, right? If you can hear them okay. But if you can't hear them, it's just, you know, what's the point of the call, right? So if you change one thing today, make sure that your audio is good. If the sound is good, you'll be able to stay engaged. Everyone will be able to stay engaged no matter how bad your video is. So the microphones on our laptops are not very good. Um, they pick up a lot of room noise. Sound can be kind of fuzzy and unclear, and they really dull your warm and natural speaking tone. And this is why I always like to tell people to buy an external microphone. And the great thing about microphones as well, external microphones, is that they allow you to adjust volume. There's usually additional toggles as well, so you can adjust things like bass to really make sure that you are getting the sound that you want. So here are some recommendations for you. So I personally use this brand. I found them on Amazon uh, for my microphones. Shure is a popular brand. Neat is also another one. And AKG. And so I use this one, but I have these other ones have been recommended to me by um, people in the industry, people I really trust. These are all different price points here. So giving you a few different options that you can look at. All right, next, let's dive into our webcams. So external cameras are definitely also one of the best investments you can make after the microphone. So similar to the audio and the microphones, our laptop webcams are not good. They make us look really grainy and dark and just kind of mute. So if I jumped on the call kind of looking like this, what would you think about me? So let me know in the chat. If I came on, you couldn't really see me that well. What's your impression of me right now? <laughs> yes, Crystal, you'd appear unprepared, amateur, yeah, not tech savvy, questionable professionalism. Yep, this is all spot on. Not impressed, haunted, don't really want to be on video. Yeah, so you've all got it, right? Like, these are all negative things that you're saying. <laughs> Nothing positive is coming out of you seeing me like that. So webcams do make a big difference. So when I got my Logitech Brio camera, which is considered one of the best webcams uh, for the price, I looked like this, right? Like instantly felt more confident. Like, wow, I'm clear, I'm sharp. I knew I was looking a lot better on camera. Um, I just looked a lot more professional. There was a bit more customization I could do too. So I could zoom in on my face if I wanted to. I can adjust the lighting, I can change colors. So external webcams do make a big difference. So this is the one I use, Logitech, but there are other cameras that you can use as well. So I mentioned Logitech Brio, that's what I use. You may also want to try a Nexigo camera. Elgato face cam is quite popular, or even your phone. So I will share more about how you can do that in our next section. Um, and if any of you have webcams that you like, feel free to throw those into the chat too. We can all learn from each other. All right, next up, I wanna talk about our software. So there are a few key pieces of software I'd recommend to enhance your tech setup. So Crisp is amazing for blocking out background noise and it works with external microphones. So I remember uh, in a previous apartment, there was so much loud construction happening right next to me and I felt very self-conscious and awkward about it. And I asked people on the call, can you hear that? Like, I'm so sorry, it's so noisy. They couldn't hear a thing and I had Crisp on. So works wonderfully. There's a software named Camo that allows you to use your phone as a camera. So I mentioned that's an option. Our phones have amazing cameras, right? So if you don't wanna splurge on a new uh, webcam, using Camo um, as a software to help you with your phone as a camera works really well. And if you are recording video, Adobe Enhance will fix your sound for free. And then last but not least, I want you to just check your video setting. So there's so many updates to Zoom, Teams, et cetera, whatever you're using that can help block out background noise without you needing to buy any sort of additional software. Um, all of these are actually free. free uh, Crisp has a free version as well. Um, so yeah, but if you don't want to you know, get another software, going into the settings is a great next step. Now, another thing I wanna talk about when it comes to tech is Wi-Fi. So, Oh my gosh, Wi-Fi just always goes out at the worst times, right? So often also a culprit of bad audio or video quality. So ideally you should be hardwired with an ethernet cord, but 
If your home doesn't have one, that's okay. I know it's not always possible. So if you are experiencing unstable internet, um, I encourage you all to check out this app called Speedify. And it's super cool. It combines all of your available networks into one super network. Um, so it includes your ethernet, your phone network, et cetera. So if you have internet problems, definitely check this one out. All right, so we've covered the tech. Let's move into the next part of the T method, which is our energy. So I'm gonna turn it back to you all again. When you think of having energy on a call, what does that mean to you when I say, oh, I want to see more energy on a call? How do you interpret that statement? Oh, thanks, Crystal. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So we have, what is this participant chat? Um, okay, so body language, eye contact, engage, loud and clear voice, interaction, smile, being present, contributing presence, listening. Just even having your camera on from Emilio, not talking too fast or too slow. Yeah, the vibe you give off, looking cheerful, voice inflection, engagement. Oh my gosh, I love how active this chat is. Okay, so yes, you've touched on a lot of different parts about energy. I think when I you know, usually talk about energy, I think first for a lot of people is like, oh yeah, I'm like awake for the call, right? But energy includes so much more as you've all demonstrated in the chat, right? So energy can be your introduction, it can be resetting yourself and body language and eye contact and smiling. So a lot of different things, right? So today we're gonna to talk about our introduction and our eye contact specifically. So believe it or not, people make a first impression of you in as little time as a few milliseconds and, and as most as a few seconds, which is really not a lot of time at all. So this first impression is going to be heavily, heavily influenced by your energy. So I wanna share a few uh, tricks with you that will help. So the first thing I want you to remember is that, yes, your mood does matter. So even though we are on video, people can sense if we're feeling agitated or tired or uncomfortable, right? And if you're feeling any of these negative emotions, they're actually probably even more magnified on video because any positive emotions or facial gestures, just they don't come through as well on video because we have this barrier of the screen. So we need to put in a little bit of extra work, a little bit more than we think uh, we need. So one way to counteract being seen as having negative or even neutral emotions is to think of a funny memory or just someone who makes you smile before joining a call. So I always like to do that. Just take a moment, think of something that makes me smile, and then I'm going to show up on the call in that way. So I'm going to show a video clip. Hopefully this, this one works. You can all hear. Um, and hopefully there are some Office fans in the audience. So let's see if we can hear this. Would I rather be feared or loved? Um, easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. All right, so hopefully some fans in the audience that made you smile or laugh a little bit. If not, got these cute little guys as my backup here. So when you watch that video clip, when you look at these cute little guys or just thought of something funny, I hope you smiled a bit more and you felt a little bit lighter. And that's the kind of energy that I want you to bring into your calls and on your face to create that strong, positive impression. Now, another important part to your introduction is small talk. But regular small talk is bad. We're going to talk about how we can fix boring small talk. So I want to start off with a group activity. So again, we keep talking about firsts. What is typically the first thing you say when you get on a call or when you see someone in the office? Or what is the first thing people usually say to you? So I'm going to give you a few options. Each is going to have a corresponding emoji, and I want you to select it or choose the reaction uh, if it's the one that you hear or the one that you use the most often. All right, so we have thumbs up for how are you? We have how's the weather? So give me a clap emoji if that's what you talk about. Can you see my screen? Or maybe something else, not one of these options. You can give me a heart emoji. Nice, okay, Crystal's throwing three emojis out. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got some thumbs up. Okay, if it's a heart, yeah, let me know what you're hearing. But let's see, mostly thumbs up. Mm hmm. Yeah, asks, how was your weekend? That's a good one. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up here. So that's natural, right? That's kind of that's just the way we, we talk. But Unfortunately, if you're using any of these without some sort of additional follow-up, they're not going to be the ideal way to start off a call or in-person conversation because they're not bringing the energy, right? As we can see in the chat, 
they're pretty generic. You might seem unprepared if you know, can you see my screen? And they don't help you stand out or leave an impression because everyone says these things. So how about changing those questions to ones like these? What are you most excited to be working on? Versus, you know, how's work been going? Is it busy? Yeah, of course, it's always busy, right? And it's just, uh, you don't wanna be reminded. What was the highlight of your weekend instead of how was your weekend? I think there was a question earlier about the weekend. So usually when you ask how was your weekend, people say good, but asking the highlight digs a little bit deeper. Or maybe just, are you watching any interesting shows? What do you recommend? Listening to any interesting podcasts? That's also a good question. So questions like these are gonna break up the monotony we usually experience and they really wake the brain up out of autopilot, right? Cause you're like, oh, whoa, wasn't expecting that question. So if you can be that person to turn small talk into interesting conversations, you're naturally going to connect better. You're gonna learn more about your colleagues and you're instantly going to become more memorable. I think we probably all have that one coworker who's good at making conversation, who's a little chattier, right? And who breaks up that awkward small talk at the beginning of calls. Like, I want you to become that person as well. So I want you all to think about a question you might use on your next call or when you see someone in person, add it into the chat. What is a unique question you might use? You can also use one of these here. But what is something you will commit to trying to use next time you start a conversation with someone to move beyond that small talk? Yeah, Manita, did you do anything fun over the weekend? So I love that you're using the word fun because you're positively priming people to think about a good thing, right? Yes, thank you, Brian. Jacqueline, anybody have summer vacation plans? That's great, very timely too, right? And everyone loves talking about their vacation plans. Crystal, what's new? Even that, yeah. Better than how are you, right? Because you know what people are gonna say when you say, how are you? Ravi says, when people ask me how I am doing, I often say, happy to be here and be a part of it. Yeah, so that's another great way. Change up your responses, right? I love that. I'm sure that, I'm sure when you saying that, it puts the other person in a good mood too. Yeah, Richa, how, how, how are you? I'm excited to share some interesting results with you today. Yeah, weekend highlights. What are you looking forward to today? Okay, excellent. All right, love these questions. I hope you all take inspiration from one another and keep adding them so we can all get ideas. All right, next I wanna talk about eye contact. So you should always aim to be looking at the camera or right below it, just depending on what your setup is. So in person, super interesting. So we make eye contact and we shake hands in person and that skin to skin contact and that eye contact uh, creates something called oxytocin, which is the social feel good hormone. It makes us feel bonded to one another. So eye contact virtually is the way we're going to recreate that online too. But it can be hard to do because it's human nature. Like I said at the beginning, we wanna look at ourselves. We wanna make sure we look okay. Uh, or we wanna see how we look reacting to something that someone said, but as best as you can try to fight that urge. And I recommend turning off self view. It helps a lot with video fatigue. A little weird at first not seeing yourself, but you, you'll feel very uh, relieved afterwards. Now, one other thing I wanna point out with eye contact. So how many of you have seen uh, presentations and video calls where someone's camera is here, but their monitor is here. So they're doing all the work here and they're talking to you and you know they're talking to you, but it's also like, why aren't you looking at me? Like what's going on over there? That's more interesting. And like, imagine if I just was giving the, the webinar like this, right? Looking over here, it's it's harder for you to stay focused, right? And you're, you know I'm paying attention, but you're also wondering a little bit in the back of your mind versus the eye contact with me looking right at you, right? So as best as you can, you know, look at the camera right below. You might need to test it out again, depending on your setup to make sure where exactly you should be looking, but it really goes a long way in making the audience feel connected to you. All right, on to aesthetics. The last part of our T method here. So aesthetics are not just about how you look, but also how the world looks around you and then how all those things combine to make a great first impression. So aesthetics include your lighting, your environment, your framing, and your clothing. And today we will talk about lighting and your environment. So diving into lighting. So I love talking about lighting because it can actually really boost confidence on video. And it's one of the easiest things to fix, but for whatever reason, people kind of you know leave it as an afterthought. So I wanna show you this in action here, similar to what we did with the webcams before. Bad lighting, right? distracting, unclear, you don't have the best impression of me. And I know personally, when I see myself like this, I'm like, oh, I do not look good. I do not feel good, I do not feel confident. But when you have great lighting, it's gonna make you look more put together, brighter and more professional. 
So when you're thinking about lighting, you can go with ring lights. If you choose ring lights, at least 12 uh, inches to 16 inches in diameter, so they're big enough to get you enough light. You might try a softbox like this thing here. Um, I use LED lights. I also have one softbox light, so you can mix and match. Whatever type of light you choose, just make sure that you are choosing lights with multiple color options. So depending on the time of day, maybe if you're wearing makeup, you're going to want to experiment with those different lighting options. Sometimes one will look better than the other. Now, for those lucky enough to have windows in their workspace, natural light is actually going to be best and it's free. We love that. So you should ideally have the window in front of you. you you're going to want to have the light shining in directly on your face. Now, no matter, again, what light source you choose, choose the multiple colors, uh, window is best to have it coming straight in and don't have it coming from the back because you're going to look like you're backlit and in some sort of witness protection program. So we don't want that. So always have the lighting coming from the front. Now, let's talk about curating your environment. So having a well thought out curated environment is going to give a more professional look and feel to your video meetings and presentations and you know, similar lighting, if you look more professional, you're going to be more confident with how you're coming off. And when you're more confident, people view you as more competent and you just have better energy, right? So you don't have to tell me, but think about your space right now. Do you have a messy room like this? Now, I actually don't care if you have a messy room like this, as long as, caveat, the space behind you that shows up on camera looks curated. So many a few apartments ago i was in this studio and literally the only place i could stick my little desk during COVID times was in front of my bed and i always felt super self-conscious that my bed was in the background it felt not very professional i just it was just a weird situation now facing issues like these they can't always be helped but if you are in a similar situation you can buy a room divider i had a coworker who worked in his kitchen and i think he was sitting in front of his pantry and he had this curtain that he hung up behind him so there are hacks to at least again Give the illusion of more of a proper workspace uh, based on those six uh, the six feet of space behind you um, so that you can feel more confident about how you're appearing on camera and making sure that you're representing yourself how you want to. So when you're starting off, my recommendation is that simpler is better. So you might start off with a background like here. Jessica is using a simple wall versus a messy room. Once you feel ready to upgrade your space, you can start adding more things. So I love this setup by Ted. She has so much natural light and she just has two plants behind her, two nice pops of color. And I thought she looked so professional, so personable and warm, just all these amazing traits together, just simply by her background. And the natural light is key. Now, the one thing I want you all to avoid when possible is try to avoid blurred backgrounds or virtual backgrounds, unless you have a green screen behind you. Virtual back, uh, excuse me, blurred backgrounds have been shown that people think sometimes you're hiding things, right? And virtual backgrounds, unless you have the green screen behind you, it is not going to be a precise cut around your body shape. And when you are moving your hands or moving your head, like we've all been on those calls, right? Where someone's like, oh, someone just like appeared out of nowhere, or like something pops up into the into the screen. And on video, we're already working overtime to just understand what's going on, put the person, the voice, understand the facial gestures, right? We're putting in extra work. Our brains are firing extra hard. So we don't want to add extra burden or challenge to reconciling the virtual and the person you know so a virtual background um makes it harder right it's going to just extra work for us to be like whoa what the heck like their hand is disappearing on and off the screen so when you think about your background what do you think is one thing you could add to it to make it a little bit more special i know most of you have your cameras off now but when it comes to your background is there something you could move out of the way is there something you could bring into the background to make it a little bit warmer more personable Emilio just turned your uh either virtual background or blur background off excellent and Prague too <laughs> Prague likes the plants idea yeah I love plants I feel like plants are very calming this Bruce bookcase half full Jason, my home office doubles as my wife's closet. I'll have to tell her to find someplace new. She might tell that to you too. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Yeah, Miriam. Yeah, or Ambika, sorry. The blurred background is your only option. Yeah, fine. That's that's totally fine. Like sometimes they're just circumstances. It's it's not possible. Um, but if you can, I recommend you try to implement some of these changes I mentioned today. All right, so we just talked a lot about backgrounds. Um, you may have noticed I didn't call this section curate your background. I called it curate your environment. And that's because it's not just about our background. So, so many advances in tech now, it's really cool to see all the things that people are creating. Um, so if you really wanna up level your presence on video, making sure that you curate your whole environment is going to be key. So, I mean, you can see what I'm doing right now with video, right? So I have, I'm not in my normal uh, space. I'm visiting LA uh, for the week, but let's take this example here. This person has a really nice background and there's content on the screen so that really the whole virtual environment is being curated, being thought about and really impressing other people, right? I saw some of you uh, commenting on my visuals earlier. Now there's lots of tools out there. Warmly, for example, is a really popular one that is actually a Zoom app. So that's easy enough to, to get on there. And Zoom uh, webinar has some options as well. So uh, there's just many, many options out there. Um, I will have a gift at the end that lists some other ideas as well. All right, so time for a recap. So we covered our tech, talked about our energy, and then we discussed our aesthetics. So if you found this helpful, would love for you all to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, weekly bite-sized career tips to supercharge your career. And the many LinkedIn learning courses, I have 14 out now. Many of them are 10 minutes or less. So I would really encourage you all to check those out for more career tips. And I have a simple feedback form. Should take 30 seconds to a minute max. Just would love your input on how the session went today. It goes a long way in helping me know what I can do better, what was most helpful for you. And there's a little gift at the end for anyone who fills it out just uh, as my way of saying thank you for taking the time. And Prague, I think it's time for, for Q&A. Sped through that. I wanted to make sure we had enough time. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. A little bit thank more. you so much. Um, yeah, I was making adjustments as I go. I'm in a hotel right now, so I, it's a less than, it's not yeah, my normal yeah. environment. Um, I'm in Boston for, for those of you who know, our uh, national convention is in Boston this year. So I just got to tour the space and all sorts of stuff. It's lots of wonderful stuff. But uh, yeah, I found a little ring light um, that, that doesn't work. Oh, nice. That come with the hotel? No, it. Uh, okay. it it's like, wow, it that's was, high tech. Yeah, no, it was a, it was, it was a, a freebie from. Actually, no, this did come from the hotel. The hotel gave it as a freebie last year when we were touring, um, and but the problem is, it's, it's not a warm light. It's a, it's a pretty harsh blue light. So, uh, you know, when I, I, I have a warm light on this side, you can tell that it's coming in. The, the, the window yeah. light is off to the side, and I guess I could have moved the table around, but. Uh, probably not, uh, but for I closed the drapes for that reason because you mentioned yeah. about the backlight. So side lights okay as long as it's not too far back, right? Because that's when you get the yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, and if you, you let's know, say this was your permanent space, you might add another light on the other side just to balance out a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. So that's why I went ahead and turned this thing on, and I'd love your feedback. Is it better with it on, or does it just look too harsh? Really, it's a little harsh. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely too harsh. It's getting, it's getting progressively <laughs> harsher, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a little bit, you know, it's a cheap light. That's that's basically yeah. it. So, <laughs> so um, you know, one of the questions that I had, I love the presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, this is super important stuff, of course, uh, incredibly important during the pandemic. But now that everybody's gone, uh, well, plenty of places have gone hybrid. Um, you know, I, I find that... Um, it, my wife and I have this debate a lot. She doesn't like to turn her video on almost at all in any of her meetings. And I'll, I, I find that there are a lot of people who struggle with that as well. Okay. Just like it feels like it's an invasion of, of privacy. OK, I get it and so forth. But I find that it's really hard to connect with people. with unless, So I'm fortunate that at SACE, in our organization at least, uh, within our staff, pretty much people turn their video on. Uh, it's rare that they don't. Um, usually the only time they don't is if it's a connection problem. Uh, and so turning your video off and so that your bandwidth can go to your audio is yeah. better, as you mentioned. So I liked yeah. that you pointed that out, audio yeah. over video. Uh, but, you know, how, um, what, what, <laughs> how do you balance that, uh, you yeah. know, because of the, you know, because there's so many people, I, 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 I hear it constantly about, you know, 
it's intrusive and I can't turn my video on or I don't like how I look on video or uh, or whatnot. As And I've even had where people will drop out of classes um, because they are so, I don't know if it's self-conscious or uh, I'm, I'm not sure. So, but I, I need help with convincing them. How would you convince them? Yeah, so, um, you know, what I always like to say is that I understand that there are reasons sometimes that people don't want to have their camera on. But I try to give a reason why it would be valuable. For example, I want to see if what I'm saying resonates with you. I want to see if I share some advice or show something that I think is cool that I'm seeing it in your faces, right? And that you're responding and it's resonating. Um, so I think it's a fine balance. You know, you want to be understanding, but also there are benefits to having, to being able to see other people. Now, when it comes to, you know, feeling comfortable on camera, hopefully, if any of you felt like that, hopefully these tips can help. Um, it is really important, like you said, Prague, to have your video on as much as you can. So there's, that's like a whole other topic, like bad meetings. And that's why people are so tired. I mean, their video, that's a whole other talk that I have. Uh, but but, you know, we only have so many touch points in a given day, especially if your company is all virtual or if you're hybrid. Mm. So I really want all of you to take advantage of those touch points. And video is going to be one of the best ways. If you have your video off, I mean, people are just going to associate your whatever it is, like the initials, right, as as you. And so let me also you know show you something else here that you all can do if you're still not quite comfortable having your video on you see my profile picture there. So a lot of people don't have theirs filled out. So at least with a profile picture, people see your face and they kind of, they, they can see that you're a person versus like a blank Zoom, you know, character. The, I think they just show initials now. So this is really about building your presence and building your visibility, right? And I know it's, it's not always fun to have your video on. I, I get it. But what? in those key moments, you want to try to have the video on and then you want to make sure you're appearing as your best self when you do have the video yeah. Would, um, you know, Khan uh, asks about or mentions about AI avatars. Have you ever used those? I have not. Okay. I think it could be fun. But again, I don't know how similar the avatar looks to you. So you kind of still want to ground it in, in reality a little bit, right? You don't want it to be like a too far off kind of visual. Um, but I think, yeah, as, as you know, ideally you have your, your face showing. How do you... Um... How do you practice or how do you balance between maintaining eye contact with the camera? Because that that's for everybody else's benefit. But at the same time, you're trying to watch what people, their, yes. their body language. So yes. if everybody's staring at the camera only, then yeah. the, the camera is useless because nobody's going to actually able to view yes. the screen. Right. Yes. So uh, how, like when, when should you focus on what? Yes. Very good question. So I have a few responses to that. So one thing you can do is you look at the camera when you're talking to someone and then when they respond, you can look away, look at their video. The second thing I would say is you can have, you can still make eye contact. One other kind of little hack, you can drag your, your video platforms, Zoom, Teams, whatever you're using to the top, mm. make it smaller. And through your peripheral vision, you can see how people are responding and reacting. The third thing I would say is for those of you who fill out the feedback form, I actually use this product called PlexiCam. Uh, it is, I put my webcam on top of this plastic device and essentially like Prog, like your video is under the plastic so I can see you and my camera's right above you. So this is great because I'm like, I'm making eye contact and I see you the whole time. So that's what I started using like as of a few months ago. It's really helped, uh, but those other two options can work as well. No, I got you. I uh, I have my webcam with me, and I didn't use it today. And that maybe I should have based off of your tips. But uh, I brought it with me, uh, yeah. and I used to. I had to find something to try and stick it right in front of my laptop so that I could uh, yeah. basically look at the camera, but actually be looking beyond the camera, right? right. And particularly when we were leading our virtual conferences, where I was essentially the keynote multiple times. Um, and so it was, I, I was super cognizant of it then. And so I, I'd done that and actually, you know, I found some old lamp that I clipped this on, but it was pretty kind of hokey. Um, yeah. So I'm super interested in what the solution is. This this ha has a, has a, one of those standard little screws. Yeah, like a clip thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, for, you know, a, um, a gorilla, a gorilla mount or any of those things for that normal camera would, would have as well. So uh, I probably just need to 
buy a tripod. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I am scrolling through the questions here to see. Ah, yeah, this is a good one. We've got a number of companies who are um, uh, at defense agencies or defense contractors and whatnot. So many of those places, video is not allowed. Um, and so I suppose in that scenario, you know, everybody's got their video off. Kenneth, you're kind of mentioning this there. Uh, and so in that scenario, is it really just more like a standard conference call instead, like it used to be back in the old days? Or I is there different yeah. tips that you would have on en showing engagement? Yeah, I think it'd be yeah pretty similar. So that tip I shared before, like, uh, hopefully you can have a profile picture. Um, mm -hmm. Same with like the chat channels you have, right? I don't know if uh, like in Slack or Teams, um, et cetera, you can have a profile picture. So that's another thing I like to say. That's still a virtual touch point, right? So they, you have your face there. Um, I don't know if you can record videos, but that's an option so people can see you and just feel like they get to know you. So it's like, oh, let me send a recap or let me introduce an idea or talk about a strategy. And if you can do it on video versus in written text, that can be another way for people to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, a question on the intro page. How can how do Asians show up differently as they apply the T method? Is there anything specific about this that Asians ought to be thinking about relative to anybody else? Um, I, I when I think about back when I was in a conference room, Asians yeah. often tended to more often than their non-Asian counterparts sit on the mm -hmm. sides on the outskirts um of the conference room or you know uh this is part of our collective imposter syndrome that we're never good enough right um and so our seating arrangement would often you know uh, uh would often show exactly that mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. lack of self-confidence and i i feel like in a virtual setting that's irrelevant now and so yeah. one of the yeah. two of the key barriers in my mind are kind of gone. One is where you choose to sit. That's irrelevant. And number two is how big or small you are physically is now no longer relevant. Yeah. So I've met so many people in person who thought I was actually a lot bigger than I actually am. Yeah. Um, and, in <laughs> yeah, in person that, uh, that thought I was a lot taller. I've met people yeah. virtually, you know, on calls and then they're, they're six foot five. I'm like, holy cow, you know? So I, I think, you know, those aspects that have been traditionally or, or, uh, over time have really, you know, we haven't been as a community as good at, adapting those kind of became a little bit less relevant now that's yeah. how, that's how I would answer that I don't know if you had any thoughts um no I totally agree with you like I I love how video has or just the virtual space has equalized everyone and not just like Asian Asian American but like introverts for example right like okay we have like the chat now and it's just there's the raise hand feature and again that's like you know, more, more details about how to lead a great meeting to make sure it's all inclusive, but I would totally agree with you there. Um, you know, nothing really comes to mind in terms of like the Asian American experience, but I would just say like the fact that you're being thoughtful, like you're all here, right? You want to learn about how to make that strong impression. It, it really can be your, your advantage, right? Your virtual advantage to be able to curate again right like in person we can only do so many things but for you to really curate the whole virtual space and how you show up like that's so important and like not a lot of people think about it like a lot of people are so like okay i know how to do virtual like i know how to hop onto a zoom and mute and unmute like no there's so many more things that go into that so the fact that you're even here and just thinking about how you show up professionally um that impacts how people perceive you right so uh, yeah i you know it's not really specific to the asian american experience but um i'm just happy to see that you're all here and the fact that you're taking this in like that's going to help you be more visible in the way that you want to be um Ricky, Ricky Wen asked a question uh what are your thoughts on mounting cameras on devices like gimbals that track that track your face and actively pan and tilt. I've seen some of those. Actually, I, I thought it was actually a, a, not even the camera as much as it was like, I feel like it's been in Teams or something. It's it's automatic. Uh, like, so I feel like they're new, like WebEx and yeah, they have some new functionality. Maybe that's what that is. Uh, yeah. I would just be conscientious to make sure it's not like, you know, moving just a lot because that's going to make people dizzy. I mean, I think essentially you kind of want to stay 
we didn't talk about framing today, but you want to kind of be, you know, let me just take this down. I don't want to be centered to the screen. You want to have, you know, take up a majority of the screen and the movement is going to be in your hands and body gestures, less kind of like tracking your movement in this way. Yeah. So just get some feedback from a trusted colleague to make sure it's not too distracting. <laughs> you know, that, that that is interesting because like I to get my size correct, I've got to sit pretty, I, I'm probably now four and a half feet away from from the computers. And so I think that's where having control over that over the webcam is so critically important because right now if if I'm animated with my motions you wouldn't know because you can't yeah. see anything below my shoulders right. and uh we we had a trainer uh, a couple of, right at the height of the pandemic and I think one of the things that he mentioned that still sticks in my mind is when you are presenting you know on uh on screen video wise you have to over animate relative to when you were in person yes. and somebody who's watching you is going to think you're nuts yeah. <laughs> but i like watching you in person if they're yes, watching yes, you yeah. from the side and you're like all over the place yeah. however yeah. you know to really engage and show that energy you kind of gotta overdo it a little bit exactly, so that yeah. it communicates across so yeah it's about yeah it, it, that's like really what the energy piece is about like kind of just passives like you got to be like in it you know yeah so few yeah. people to kind of be like oh okay she's like excited or like she's very positive like that's how they feel it yeah and your 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 um your happy thoughts comment was a good one because i'm a little bit under the weather and i realize i also came off with a little bit of old uh w with a little bit of low energy as well when oh. i started my talk so uh, i i you're totally you're irrelevant saying, don't worry about that yeah. <laughs> Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how you're doing the overlays? I think, are you using Prezi or are you using, uh, I think you said something about Warmly or something like that? Yes, or... Warmly um, has like a more simple name tag feature, but yes, I am using Prezi. Um, I can't remember if you mentioned uh, Prague in my intro, but I used to work at Prezi. Um, so yeah, very familiar with the product, but that's what I'm using. How like how hard is it to get started? Uh, is like for what you just did, um, is that like, you know, okay, well, that's super advanced, you know, yeah. Python programming something, I don't know. Uh, or is that like, hey, this took 10 minutes to put together? Um, it didn't take 10 minutes to put together, but once you have a nice presentation, um, it's not too hard to kind of figure out how to use it. So essentially, I have a separate app, the Prezi video app. Uh, it's a virtual camera. So I change my camera in Zoom, and then I'm controlling the slides through my Prezi video app. Okay. So yeah. As long as you have your content, just make it put on put it on one side of the screen. Your background will drop um, when you open up or when you um, import import it into Prezi Video, and and then yeah, you can just control it that way. All right, cool. And I'm presuming that on the website, there's probably a few tutorials, as there always is, of how to yes. try something out. And so it's probably yeah. just one of those you just got to try it and you know take a couple hacks at it uh, before you kind of start getting it. So gotcha. yes. I do um, do some, um, I see some questions here, Prezi consulting. So many of you are <laughs> curious for your teams or just you individually, another way to stand out, right? Um, just feel free to, to send me a note. I'll put my information back up here. Yeah. Is the, um, all the software that you mentioned uh, regarding, you know, the, uh, for audio and video and whatnot, uh, do you just need to crisp and camo and, some others Adobe, you have yeah. to load them up every single time you're on a new call or it's automatically so, on as soon as it's installed or like yeah so they should all camo i think you have to open if you want to make adjustments okay um but everything else crisp should connect right away like once you have it set up and adobe what i shared that's if you have a recorded video so you just like upload the file to that and okay. then the settings are the settings yeah so it's nothing that's a huge lift you know every time you you get on camera yeah okay so it's not like every single time i'm on a new, I'm on a new call okay i'm gonna load this like up 20 different up. things yeah, no, exactly, no, no, because it's otherwise like it's just yeah. like screw it you know? yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so it's it's yeah all right then it's kind of more of a startup program or something like that you gotta yeah, yeah, yeah. Around exactly, exactly okay cool um in terms of profile pictures any guidelines or recommendations so that we don't look unprofessional Yes, I do. Um, well, I think you use your best judgment, right? Like you're going to want a not a crazy background. Like think about what is your LinkedIn profile picture, right? So what would look okay there? 
probably just use the same thing on your video platform. Um, you don't want like other people like cropped out in the photo. You don't want a busy background, just something nice and clean. You smiling, looking happy. I think that's, that's the perfect photo. Yes. Uh, I, you know, some of the LinkedIn photos, sometimes you'll see people who have action shots or something like that. I would kind of feel like that would feel less comfy in this scenario. Yeah. Because while, you know, nobody's staring at a LinkedIn photo or LinkedIn profile photo when they are communicating yes. with you, right? But yeah. in this scenario, if you're using your profile picture, but it has you speaking or like, oh, that's yes. a bright idea or whatever, yeah. that's, that I, I think that might be a little distracting. So something where you are at least facing. Yeah, you want it to feel like you're, you know, talking to that person versus like they're like playing basketball or something like that, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Even if yeah. it's a professional action, but sure, still. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think so as well. I'm scrolling through because there's lots of things. Um, uh, I'm a person of color and would benefit from lighting, but I wear glasses. And so lighting tends to reflect off of my glasses. Yep. Any, any tips that you might have in those I types do. of scenarios? Yes. So two things. One, whatever lighting you're using, try to lift it up a little bit instead of having it straight on. Straight on for sure, you're gonna get a reflection. Um, I know like ring lights, especially with glasses, that's like very obvious. Lift it 45 degree angle, a little bit higher up coming down on you. Second, if you're still getting that glare, um, try putting like a towel or some something that diffuses the light. And that should help not have like the very, I'm assuming it's ring lights this person's talking about. You won't have like the stark circle in your glasses. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing you can try, you know, I, I mentioned the softbox or the LED lights. That works as well. They're not as as harsh when it comes to shape. Yeah. No, that's yeah, I always get the glasses question. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> what about um, headsets? Any thoughts on headsets? Positive I don't mind. Yeah, I don't. Whatever. I don't mind headsets. The one thing to be careful of, and this happened to me, is the microphone rubbing against your shirt. So yeah. I remember I was giving this. I was like, oh, prepared for this marketing team meeting. I was like, oh, my presentation is so good. And then afterwards, I asked my mentor for some feedback. He said, oh, it's great, but like something was like going on with the sound. So just make sure, you know, get that feedback again from someone or record yourself. Just make sure it's not rubbing against your shirt. Yeah. Especially when it's on down here, I've, I've seen where we'll, if, if somebody, if you turn or if you, yes, yes. And then the volume fades out. Yeah. yeah. It fades out or it changes the volume because of where the microphone is. Yeah. So, well, hopefully you all get the external mic you use crisp and then you're all good to go. You don't need the headphones. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. That now I didn't bring my external mic with me this because I was just too heavy. But uh, in any case, obviously it didn't matter because I brought this thing and I still didn't use it. So nice. You know. Yeah. Well, you sound good now. Yeah. So, <laughs> <worries>. <laughs> so um, hey, folks, if there's any other questions, feel feel free to uh, put them into the chat. I'm going to look and scroll back down. Um, and I think I got them all. Nice. We have some good questions. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for being so engaged. How how often can you update or should you, should you update your picture? Like, should you um, update it? Like, if you get a new haircut or lose weight or gain weight or like... Oh, yeah. I think update it as, update it as often as you like. I think there's some, you know, value in people kind of associating you with like an image if you're using it across all your various touch points and they're like oh that's you know that's Lorraine um just make sure if you change the photo that it just changes across no harm in changing though like I had an old headshot that I used on LinkedIn and I got a new one I'm like all right I'm gonna update all my virtual assets so yeah you, you just make sure that it's representing you how you want to be represented so if you got the haircut if you lost weight and you want people to see that then yeah go ahead and change the photo and I'm sure you'll get some comments that would be you know, a good conversation starter for someone to say, oh, I noticed you have a new photo. How do you add the static picture when you're not using the video camera? Yeah, so that's going to be in your um, settings on whatever video platform you're using. So you can upload your um, or edit your profile. And I think I had, um, actually, I saw earlier a um, direct message. So you don't have to do anything to show that video. Just make sure you're signed into your Zoom account. And then um, as long as your video is off, the picture will appear. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are close to the end, so I'm going to wrap it up here and let me share my screen again. Boy, if I knew how to do Prezi, it wouldn't be <laughs> complicated. So, Lorraine, again, thank you so much for. I think we can. You can see my screen. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Lorraine, all good. <laughs> thanks again for spending your time with us. We've got a quick, our own quick survey. So folks, if you could go ahead and answer that, Jessica's going to toss it up. There are three questions. Please scroll down and answer all three. Uh, these are questions that we ask every single time. It gives us a gauge on how we're doing uh, and uh, go from there. What's coming up? Our next one uh, is overcoming toxic invisibility with Ryan Takamiya. Uh, this will be on Wednesday, April 3rd. So about four weeks from now. Uh, also going on currently is our Top Gun Leadership Academy. We're now three weeks in. In a couple of days, it'll be week four. Con uh, concurrently to that, we've got Amplify Your Strategic Impact, also close to uh, on week four. The, the groups are sold out, but we may offer it again this fall uh, for anyone interested. If your company is interested in either of these programs, please reach out to me. The big one coming up is our Women's Leadership Conference. This is a virtual one-day conference on Friday, April 26th. The early bird registration period has passed. Special thanks to Dow for sponsoring that as well. Uh, great, super greatly uh, grateful for their continued support. It is a, um, it's a pretty thorough conference for a one day thing. So we've got three concurrent tracks. There will be nine workshops, three executive panels, two keynotes, and a round of focus circles. Uh, our lineup is this all star-studded cast so far of six wonderful trainers, uh, each of which do this full time on their own, <laughs> on their own, uh, you know, uh, to uh, for their day job. So uh, these folks know what they're doing, uh, and uh, we're super super excited to host them. And lastly, if you're not following us on LinkedIn, please do so. We've got lots of programs uh, that are coming up that you can stay in, in, in touch with. And if your ERG isn't connected with us, just reach out to me at, SACE, at pro at saceconnect.org. There's no cost or commitment to join our growing network. With that, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And we hope to see you next time.